Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville, this edition's top stories. Hundreds of St. Lucians gain new employment opportunities from the latest investment company to the island. The Cannabis Commission lays out a comprehensive framework for the legalization of cannabis hair and a revised youth sports program to be implemented later this year. Hundreds of St. Lucians are gaining new employment opportunities with one of the Caribbean's largest homegrown business process outsourcer offering management solutions. ITEL BPO, which was founded in Jamaica in the last year, has been in discussions with Invest St. Lucia on branching out to St. Lucia. ITEL BPO has now opened in the town of Ufort. The company will next week host job fairs to recruit staff. Here's Anisia Antoine. At the beginning of the year, Invest St. Lucia, ISL, introduced its plans for 2020 to the media, outlining all the projects set to come on stream in the near and long term. Within just a few months, ITEL BPO's Viewfort operation has come to fruition and the company is ultimately expected to employ more than 400 St. Lucians in the global services sector. Following the MOU signing between ISL and ITEL BPO in January, ISL immediately began retrofitting a 20,000 square foot factory space as part of its facilitation process to accommodate this new investor. Despite the challenges posed by COVID-19 and the inevitable delays caused by safety restrictions and protocols, ISL delivered the shell fully retrofitted to ITEL BPO specifications by June 29, 2020. ITEL BPO also showed commitment regardless of the fragility of the world's economy, demonstrating that employment in business process outsourcing can meet up with the technological and innovative demands of the new normal. At the official handing over of the facility on June 29, ISL's CEO Roderick Sherry said ITEL BPO's new facility will play a critical role in reducing unemployment rates in our country St. Lucia, particularly amongst young women and men. Mr. Sherry added that this new state-of-the-art BPO facility will house initially 150 employees in the global services sector with aggressive growth plans by ITEL BPO. These hiring commitments have changed minimally and during the past week, ITEL BPO's Kieran Long, Senior Vice President of Operations, announced that about 400 employees will begin going through training by next week. ITEL BPO's Viewfort operation is the company's fifth in the Caribbean and is one step closer to the company employing 5,000 agents in the region. Anyone desiring to apply to ITEL BPO can send a curriculum vitae to SLU recruitment at itelbpo.com. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meanwhile, more opportunities have been secured for St. Lucians to gain employment under the Canadian Seasonal Agricultural Farm Workers Program. The latest batch of 52 workers are now all set to take up employment in Canada following an orientation exercise held on Wednesday, July 8, 2020. Organized by the Department of Labor, the orientation exposed the workers to what they should expect when they arrive in Canada, importance of teamwork and deportment and the basic do's and don'ts. In his address to the gathering, Labor Minister Honorable Stevenson King encouraged the workers to be quality ambassadors for St. Lucia. According to Minister King, the performance of the individual workers may result in the creation of fresh opportunities for even more St. Lucians. The group of 52 St. Lucian men will leave the island on July 15 via special charter and will be employed on farms in various provinces for a maximum of eight months. All workers signed commitment contracts and will undergo two weeks mandatory quarantine upon arrival in Canada. St. Lucia has successfully managed the first commercial flight to the island as revised travel protocols come into effect. More in this report. St. Lucia welcomed the first commercial flight into Huronur International Airport on Thursday with a full complement of safety protocols in place. American Airlines Flight 2295 from Miami International Airport landed at 2.15 p.m. 
This was the first flight to arrive since the destination reopened its borders on June 4, 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The island is scheduled to also welcome Delta from Atlanta on Friday and JetBlue from JFK in the coming weeks. Officials from the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, the Ministry of Tourism, St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, and the Ministry of Health greeted passengers. Various teams assisted with the new arrival procedures to ensure a seamless experience navigating the enhanced safety procedures at the airport. Per COVID-19 protocols, upon arrival, all visitors pass through a nurse's station for screening before advancing to immigration and customs. After successfully picking up their luggage, arriving passengers proceeded to the exterior of the terminal, where COVID-19 certified taxis provided transportation to certified hotels. Clad in full PPE, Tourism Minister Honorable Dominic Fede spoke on the reintroduction of the service to the island. This is the beginning of the opening of our tourism sector. Uh, no means by is it at full capacity, but what we are doing here is to examine our protocols. We are testing uh, all of the management mechanisms we've put in place to ensure that we can coexist with COVID. Uh, we can't stay closed forever. Um, we get the calls, we get the letters from our constituents as parliamentary reps on both sides of the political aisle and also as ministers of government. And so what we want to ensure is that um, we strike a very strong balance between meeting the public safety of our nationals with very strong public health management and also rebound our economy. We are having a, a good process. Uh, to determine whether there are any shortcomings or issues with the process. We intend to meet immediately after this flight has been cleared to determine what uh, the areas where, where we see that there are weaknesses uh, and to be able to strengthen. But so far the process has been going on reasonably well and we are getting quite good cooperation from the passengers at this point in time. All arriving passengers received gift bags with local chocolates, St. Lucia cocoa tea ingredients with a recipe, hand sanitizer, branded flip-flops, water bottles, and handy what-you-need-to-know guidelines. I'm from North Carolina in the United States. Um, we were actually supposed to travel to Barbados, but with the restrictions and everything, we had to change our destination. So St. Lucia was our next choice. Uh, well, I'd already had it planned because we were on our honeymoon, so just for the wedding. To add to the excitement of the first arrival, St. Lucia awarded a holiday prize to one lucky passenger. And you have just won yourself four nights stay for two with breakfast in a luxury cottage at the five-star luxurious Sugar Beach, a Viceroy Resort. The strategic phased approach to reopening St. Lucia's tourism sector includes comprehensive safety and wellness protocols developed by government and tourism officials. A COVID-19 task force continuously monitors local and global health updates, assessing protocol options to mitigate the possible spread of COVID-19 for visitors and St. Lucian communities. For more information and pre-registration prior to arrival in St. Lucia, please visit www.stlucia.org forward slash COVID-19. For the Government of St. Lucia, I am Jureen Georges. The Cannabis Commission, appointed by Cabinet in 2019, has presented its report on the development of a cannabis industry in St. Lucia. The Commission has recommended the legalization of cannabis under a regulatory framework. The St. Lucia Cannabis Commission on Thursday presented its findings based on an assessment of the impact of the legalization of cannabis and its benefits to the country. The report, according to Chairman of the Commission, Attorney at Law Michael Gordon QC, shares similar literature to the report undertaken by the CARICOM Regional Commission on Marijuana. He indicated that the Commission has borrowed substantially from the conclusions and recommendations of the CARICOM Commission. The conclusion, according to the Chairman, favored the legalization of cannabis. Michael Gordon QC went on to explain the regulatory environment in which cannabis could be legalized. The Commission was of the view that the growing, processing for industrial and medicinal purposes, the possession for recreative use by adults, and the possession and use for religious use should be made legal within a framework which we 
set out. The Commission was of the view that the protection of young persons under the age of 18 should be achieved by the criminalizing of the sale or otherwise supplying or attempting to supply high THC cannabis for recreational use by young persons. The Cannabis Commission indicated that a model like that used for bananas should be used. The chairman indicated that for this model, there would be a central purchasing association, the St. Lucia Cannabis Cooperative, that would comprise all cannabis growers. Its responsibility would be to license all growers and to determine what criteria should be used by growers as it relates to potency and so on. The cooperative, therefore, would be the licensing authority and no person could legally grow marijuana unless licensed by the cooperative with the quality of the cannabis being assessed by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. Health consultant on the Cannabis Commission, Dr. Stephen King, highlighted that there are many benefits to legalizing cannabis use, noting that only a regulated environment can ensure the proper management of its use and the generation of revenue. The interesting thing about cannabis in particular and why people with mental health issues from depression to anxiety to psychosis and thought disorders, the reason why people will gravitate towards cannabis, not only is it because it's available easily, but also because of its neuronal amelioration and inhibitory effect. It tends to give people a sense of control over their thoughts. Their thoughts slow down. So they feel they get a benefit from it. And in fact, CBD, cannabidiol, is now being studied as a, as a pharmaceutical product to deal with schizophrenia, anxiety, and so on. THC, it is true, tends to be pro-psychotic. CBD is anti-psychotic. Um, and of course, in an un unregulated environment, when you go on the street because you have thought disorders and you go seeking out a cannabis product to ameliorate your, your, your painful thoughts that are disturbing you greatly, you may find high THC, which might make your problems worse. The use of cannabis by Rastafarians is regarded by their religion as a sacrament, and as such, they would be exempted from licensing. The legalization would also have to provide a revenue stream for the government to finance the regulation and contribute to the national wealth. Dr. King recommends education campaigns and providing widespread support for susceptible individuals who may have problems that contribute to substance use. And for pregnant and nursing mothers, children and adolescents, cannabis would be prohibited. Economic consultant on the Cannabis Commission, Melissa Hippolyte Descat, provided the economic benefits of the legalization. When we look at the revenue, under the, and so there will be no revenue under, the, under Model 1 because decriminalization, there will be no industry. But under Model 2 and 3, we see that there's a roughly about $82 million that can be generated with um, Model 2 and roughly about 80 under Model 3. So both of these models will yield significant amounts of revenues for the government. The differences, is, um, the differences we saw was based on the implementation cost. So if you have uh, Model 3 where you have a statutory body, there will be more implementation costs which would um, account for the difference. When we look at value added, and I'm not going to go into all of the methodology, but value added is how we measure GDP, the contribution to GDP. So when you look at the value of output, you minus the cost of inputs and taxes. What is left is the value added. And we saw that the value added on the Model 2 is roughly about $426 million, which is very significant. And especially in a time of COVID, um, the, the, the economy can definitely do with that boost. The St. Lucia Cannabis Commission was established by the government of St. Lucia in 2019 to review and make recommendations on the laws and regulations as it relates to cannabis and marijuana. The ministries of Youth and Sports and Education have completed a review of the youth sports program in schools. More from Anisia Antoine. Officials from the Department of Youth Development and Sports met with representatives from the corporate office of the Ministry of Education to present a revised concept of the youth sports program and to seek their participation in finalizing the action plan for its development and implementation. Acting Permanent Secretary at the Department of Youth Development and Sports, Benson Emil, explained the rationale behind this initiative. And the intention is to go you know, on, on the road in terms of 
engaging you know major stakeholders and fine tuning you know that concept and education being you know one of the primary stakeholders because you know the school plant there are so many students you know actively participated in sports and the school plant you know we felt it necessary to to consult them and as we move up you know to grow and build you know more or less a a, a small grouping you know that will revise and fine-tune the concept even further the acting permanent secretary also explained that one of the objectives of the program includes ensuring that all schools receive assistance from the ministry of youth development and sports in developing their sports programs that would be one you know of the primary you know objectives is to encourage to help for the ministry to go in and help schools you know develop sports programs and by sports programs, I mean having, you know, activities, active sporting activities throughout the year in schools and organizing it, you know, around, you know, classes versus class and house versus house. So that when it comes to, you know, preparing a school's team to represent, you know, the school in, in national competition, that they would be better prepared. And as a result, the quality of the competitions, you know, would be improved. The quality of the competitions that the ministry puts up every year, you know, in all the respective sporting disciplines would be improved. The review of the revised concept of the youth sports program took place on Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. The Make It Happen Foundation continues its support of police and fire stations island-wide and with proceeds raised from the annual officers' ball held this past December has furnished top-of-the-line gym equipment including treadmills, weights and other machines to four police and fire stations. The handover took place on the 9th of July at the St. Lucia Fire Service headquarters in Castries, which is among the recipients of the equipment. Soufre, Viewfort and the Police Force Academy where the SSU train are among the beneficiaries. Four other stations received large flat screen televisions, including the Richfort and Shrozel police stations, and three others each received five waiting room chairs and kitchen stools. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiole. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Stock up on essentials such as animal feed, fertilizers, pesticides enough to last for about 30 days. Stock up on fuel and oils for farm equipment. Ensure that tools and vehicles are serviced to prevent breakdowns and to ensure that farming and food production remain steady. And protect yourself and your workers by ensuring you take all necessary precautions to remain healthy. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiole. Monsieur Tan, Janel, Monsieur Madame Departement de Kinewes Responsabilité, with formation and gouvernement cette fois-ci, la CGIS et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, Capuzoto Nouvelle Aquiole. Vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Uh, Considération des voyages avions que j'avais vu commencer opération à cette ci Trois institutions collaborent pour présenter équipement personnel de protection contre corona 
pour yon qui ka travail dans secteur transportation touristique. Ministère des Affaires touristiques, ancien premier ministère de santé et puis autorité des affaires touristiques cette ci et fait ses présentations ça là côté yon a fait avec la bébé yon fait avec la 20000 gars yon 1020 mas et 840 sanitizer à danser que pense à la produire cette ci même. Objectif initiative initiative là c'est pour continuer faire bataille pour abattre possibilité maladie corona pour s'y manger en pays Si que le parmenant ministre des Affaires touristiques, ça c'est Donald 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 Vite, de tout engager dans opération ça là pour que toute opération avec toute précaution soit en place. Et si l'on vite, il va considérer ça un investissement pour préparer les chauffeurs taxi au nouveau normal ça là. Ministre des Affaires touristiques, ça c'est Onwa Dominic Fede expliquer que c'est faut nous tout préparer comme c'est une situation qui personne pas ça a bien pas sauté en quelle façon en quelle direction ça qu'il marche alors c'est faut ministre de faire assurer que les chauffeurs taxi c'est pour faire assurer yo bien préparé et qu'à suivre toutes les règles qui en place président association taxi au sud pays cette ci Matthew Hutchinson déclare que il faut gouvernement recevoir bonne recognition et bon compliment mon dieu yo ka ménager situation maladie corona pays à manière yo ménager déjà et aussi ministre de affaires touristiques qui tient ses chauffeurs taxi à bien engagé et à collaborer et puis en effort ça là. Hutchinson a vu qui en considération que les chauffeurs taxi déjà caspé pour un petit temps présent. Il y a quatre même j'ai parlé et malgré la caïne oui mais comme il dit c'est la vie. C'est un moyen de préco lundi le 6 juillet 2020. Cet lycéen qui a travaillé à son grand habitation agricole à Canada, j'ai trouvé une autre grande occasion pour retourner, pour commencer une autre saison de travail en bas, saison pour le travail agricole à Canada. Le dernier set de travail, c'est qu'à dire tout, j'ai préparé pour commencer le travail à Canada. Là, c'est après, j'ai été participé à l'exercice pour faire au cours et puis ça, j'ai supposé faire par le travail. Ce département est là qui a organisé ces sessions là pour exposer ce travail là pour ses qualités et expériences là qui ont été ni en Canada et importance pour apprendre à travailler ensemble. Il y a aussi apprendre toutes ces habitudes là qui ont ni pour perdre et ça ont ni pour aussi abrasser. Ministre de Sécurité et de Responsabilité pour affaires travailler, on a Stevenson King, encouragé ce travail là pour aussi opérer comme une ambassade pour cette ci et dépend à sa performance. Selon M. King, ça peut découvrir encore plus bon l'occasion. C'est le si. C'est vendé, c'est vendé, c'est ce qu'a dit travailler ça là. Quand il quitte le pays là, le 15 juillet, pour commencer à travailler à sous diverses mutations agricoles à Canada pour 8 mois. Tout ce travail ça là, c'est si il y a un contrat et qu'il y a un quarantaine pour des semaines après il y a débattu le pays Canada. Du moins, c'est un pour te observer le journée de l'organisation CARICOM. Et que les organisations, ça là, à cette ci le dépassé, ministre des Affaires les étrangères, on est absolu, Flood Bobre, fait un appel pour cette ci encourager plus d'efforts de unification entre ces pays CARICOM. Selon Mme Bobre, pays cette ci ensemble et puis l'autre pays CARICOM, ni pour parler et puis on se le voit. Même qu'un pays Europe et que l'on grand pays qui a fait, Mme Bobre, il que cette ci seulement pas né assez force. Pour adresser la situation à un établissement mondial, comme les Nations Unies et les autres. Alors, tout le pays qui a eu pour continuer à parler et puis on se le voit. Ça, c'est un call que nous avons mis par tout le pays qui a eu pour tout le pays qui a eu pour nous continuer à calculer quand les individuels des Nations Unies. Nous sommes une famille en même temps. Aujourd'hui, nous avons célébré le CARICOM Day. Et nous commençons la célébration de ça. Nous raisons la flag là, qui est symbolique, mais qui fait nous changer que nous sommes une famille. Et nous sommes pour rester ensemble. Eh bien, messieurs, mesdames, ça se côté nous avons une nouvelle nouvelle aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie pour temps pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Pour que je ne puisse pas encore, si vous avez conservé la vie, je vous remercie pour la nouvelle. Nouvelle à Creole. Témoin, souhaitez tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine et que ça le moins vieux pour cette chaîne. Merci, Apple Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. 
You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.